Brown, Mysteries. Adventures in excitement and suspense, based on the best-selling novels by the slick storytelling sensation, Carter Brown. felt an ice-tipped finger hit the base of your spine and slide all the way out to the back of your skull. That was how I felt when the three shots on the screen shattered the silence. In the insurance racket, they consider Mark Hunt a strong character. In the Goldbride house, I considered Mark Hunt a scared kid. Mark Hunt wasn't arguing with me. How could he? He's me. When John Cross grabbed my arm and yelled frantically that it was Lila who'd screamed, my heart was in my mouth, but my gun was in my hand. Cross and I ran for Lila's room. Lila? She's not moving. Now don't go off half cock, Cross. Let's take a look. What has happened? I heard shots. And the scream. It sounded like Lila. Come on, quickly. The door's open. Hunt, is she... Is Lila... It's okay. She's still breathing. She's only fainted. Fainted? Then she has not been killed. Oh, thank heaven. But the shots. There were three of them. Yeah, and if you look at the wall over the bed, you'll see where they ended up. She had a very lucky escape. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. The question is, who is him? Yes, that is it. Who fired the shots? You have the nerve to ask that, you murdering swine. Wasn't your fault those bullets missed. I had to take you apart with my bare hands, but I'm going to save you for the police. The grass school, you are ready. Stop it, both of you. Lila's moving. It's all right, honey. Everything's all right. Well, what happened? It was... Dark. The door opened. I saw a gun. There were shots. It's all finished now, Lila, and you're safe. The shots missed. Uh, d did I scream? Did you scream? Baby, you made more noise than a hula girl huddled on an iceberg. I suggest we all go downstairs. I think there's safety in numbers tonight. An excellent idea. I would not fancy going back to my own room now. You don't have to worry. You wouldn't try to shoot yourself. More's the pity. Cut it out, Cross. Let's get downstairs, as Beaver says. Can you manage, Lila, honey? Yes, of course I can, John. I'll be all right now. Okay. Hey, you and Cross go first, Lila. Then Beavis and Degrescu. I'll bring up the rear with Mavis. Hang on to my arm, Lila, darling. Thank you, John. I am glad to be behind Mr. Cross. With his crazy notions, I would rather not be in front of him. Well, it's no use looking to me for protection. I've never been the physical type. You can say that again, kid. Never mind your disappointments, Mavis. Listen to me. What, Mark? When we get downstairs, anything I say about the photograph, you back me up. Why? What are you going to do? Set a little snare for the killer, that's all. When we filed into the living room, someone realized it was breakfast time. But with the death of Clem Goldbright the night before, the hullabaloo with the police, the hours had been turned upside down. It was after everyone had eaten that I decided to try my idea. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got something to say. This situation can't go on any longer. I had intended keeping quiet until the police return sometime tomorrow morning. But that's impossible now. What are you talking about, Hunt? Keep quiet about what? Simply this. The identity of the murderer. You know, you know who it is? Yes, I know who the murderer is. Who? Who is it, then? You may remember after Henry Goldbright's death, Mavis mentioned a photograph. I believe she spoke of it vaguely to everyone. I'm sorry, Mavis, I have to tell this story. Yes, Mark, uh, of course. Mavis was on the jetty when Henry was killed, and she had her camera with her. She saw a figure on the balcony, but the distance was too great for her to recognize who it was. But being a keen amateur photographer, she automatically raised her camera and got a shot. Uh, of the murderer? She was desperate for money, both she and Roger. So Mavis thought the murderer would pay heavily for the photograph. She didn't care whether Henry's death was ever revealed as murder or not. She had no love for Henry, as long as she obtained enough money to keep their business solvent. But I don't understand. Why did Mavis mention the photograph to everyone? Why not only to the murderer? Because, like a lot of women amateur photographers, Mavis can take a picture, but she can't develop and print the film. So all she had was the exposed film. She didn't know who the murderer was. Then Mavis turned the film over to me. I can develop a film and print it. And once the film was developed, the murderer was known. Who is it? I think it better for everyone's sake if I don't tell you that. 
That must wait until Lieutenant Wilder and his men return in the morning. In the meantime, I'm going to my room. I shall stay there until the police arrive. I just want to add that I have a gun and I have no intention of sleeping. That's all. And that was it. The trap set, baited and ready to snap. I didn't really feel as confident as I sounded, but there's one thing I've always believed. If you're going to bluff, you might as well make it good. I left them looking amazed and wondering and went upstairs to my room. I checked my 32. This was no time to have a gun that was empty or was likely to jam. And then I settled down for the long wait. And a long wait it turned out to be. All through the rest of that day, I sat in my room and lit one cigarette after another and gazed at the view from my window. The sky changed from pearl to smoky to leaden gray. The water rippled and splashed and tumbled under the wind until darkness fell and I couldn't see anymore. I opened the window. Somewhere there was a faint glimmer of moon. That and the glow from my cigarette made the only light in my room. I wondered if I'd die from nicotine poisoning before I had a chance to find out who the murderer was. The strain was stinging at my nerves. Against the sound of the wind, I heard the murmur of voices as the occupants of World's End went to their rooms, to bed. All except one of them, I thought. And he or she would be waiting, as I was, till the house was completely still. The wind had changed its note. I looked at my watch in the darkness, its luminous hands pointed to 1.30 a.m. My eyes felt as though two-pound lead weights were hanging from their lids. I'd had no sleep for about 36 hours, and it was as much as I could do to keep them open. And then, from behind me, from the window which I'd left open, I heard a small sound. Someone was coming in. Don't try anything foolish. I grab him for your gun. I'll pull the trigger before you can hope to get it. Okay. The film, the negative, where is it? This is uh, strictly for laughs. It doesn't exist. Don't stall. Where is it? I told you it never existed. Sure, Mavis was there and she had a camera, but she never took the picture. You're lying. It was a bait and you swallowed it. If it doesn't exist, then that's all I want to know. That puts me right in the clear. Dispense with you and no one can pin it on me. You certainly put on a good act. A dumb college boy who never grew up. The grief and outrage when poor Lila was nearly killed. Only you never intended to hit her with those bullets, did you, Cross? You just wanted to make it look as black as possible for the Gresco. <laughs> of course. Rather clever of me, I thought. I'll marry Lila. Get all the dough I want. And neither you nor anyone else is going to stop me, Hunt. Maybe. No maybe about it. That fool Beavis girl had me worried. Those notes we exchanged, I thought she really had got a photo. I would have paid for it, too, but where was I going to get the money from? That's why I ignored her last note. I hoped her greed would keep her mouth shut. I thought she knew who I was and I'd realized that I'd have to wait to get the money. That will of Henry's must have upset your calculations a little. When you realized Lila wasn't getting all the money... Keep your voice down. Yeah, it threw me for a while. But then I realized that once I got rid of Clem, the whole estate would be Lila's. So it didn't matter very much. You don't think you'll get away with it, do you? <laughs> but I will. There's nothing surer. Yeah, I'm afraid we'll have to terminate this conversation. If you've any prayers, Hunt, say them now. <laughs> What the, what's that? Uh, the ghost of Henry Goldberg. Uh, there's one thing about ghost voices. The, the timing's terrific. It's a trick and you won't get away with it. There's one advantage about sitting in a room all day. You get to know it so well that it doesn't matter when it gets dark. I'll get you. Yeah, that was your one chance. Too bad you missed. The window. I'll take you with me. Not if I can help it. That's right! Hunt, 
Are you all right? We heard your voices, Mark. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, it was nice work, Roger. You timed it beautifully. I, I didn't know what to do for the best. We weren't asleep. That is, I would have been, but Mavis kept me awake. When we knew the murderer was there, she thought of the ghost voice trick. Yeah, well, it worked like a charm. In fact, I hate to think where I'd be without it. In eternity, probably. Oh, I don't know what I'm laughing for. And believe me, I wasn't laughing at the time. There's nothing funny about fighting for your life in the dark with a killer. Mark, what's been going on? Mavis, Roger, what... Calm down, Lila, it's all over. Huh? The guy who murdered your husband and your brother-in-law is down taking a drink. A drink? Yeah, in about 15 fathoms of water. That scream was... was Mr. John Cross diving out the window. He was the murderer. John? Mm-hmm. I can't believe it. I... I'll never trust another man as long as I live. Who wants to be trusted? I got different ideas. Like what? Like a trip back to New York, preferably with a detour through Mexico. Alone? Not exactly. I was thinking of asking a certain widow along for company. I'm just wondering what she'd say. I know what she'd say. The widow is willing. <laughs> This is Carter Brown. I guess being an insurance investigator has its compensations, for Mark Hunt anyway. And what a compensation. A beautiful blonde, and with money. There's a blonde in my next book too, a story called Meet a Body, but it's not the blondes. It belongs to a little guy named Jacob Finney, and the character who meets it is my hero, Sebastian Shaw, a private detective. So this is Carter Brown saying, so long for now, be seeing you. Lyndall Barber as Lila Goldbright, while as Mark Hunt you heard our star, Richard Meikle. The Carter Brown Mystery Theatre, based on the best-selling novels by Carter Brown, is dramatised and directed by Maurice Travers for Grace Gibson Radio Productions. Mm -hmm.